Hi, my name is Marta, and in this talk, I will present our recent work on combining multimodal information for metal artifact reduction using an unsupervised deep learning approach. Our work sets into the context of hip replacement, uh, which is a very common surgical procedure aimed at replacing a pathological hip joint with a modular implant. As most implants have a non-negligible failure rate, they may uh, at some point require to be substituted in revision surgery. So medical imaging plays a key role in monitoring patients with hip implants. In particular, magnetic resonance imaging is used to assess the soft tissue condition around the prosthesis, while computer tomography is preferred for bones and implant visualization, and this is especially true in planning revision surgery. However, metallic implants are one of the main causes for image quality degradation, as they induce noise and artifacts uh, which hamper the diagnostic interpretation of the images, and specifically in the most clinically relevant areas, uh, that is, close to the implant. The appearance of the artifacts is strictly linked to the image modality. In computer tomography, the artifacts appear as bright and dark streaks that radiate from the metal source throughout the reconstructed image. Many approaches have been proposed in the literature to reduce this uh, streaking effect. Uh, and they are traditionally based on sinogram interpolation strategies or iterative uh, reconstruction methods from the raw data. Such methods are often uh, dependent on the geometry of the acquisition and are now being challenged by data-driven learning approaches. However, uh, learning approaches are mostly trained in a supervised fashion. Uh, this requires pairs of images of the same patients with and without the artifact. As such images cannot be physically acquired, surrogate ground truth uh, is often adopted, such as uh, preoperative and postoperative image pairs or simulations, uh, which uh, might not necessarily be sufficiently representative of real cases. Only recently, an unsupervised approach was proposed by Liao and collaborators, uh, which exploits an adversarial training strategy to learn the distribution of corrupted and artifact-free images without the need of pair data. On the MR side instead, uh, very little work has dealt with the management of the metal artifact. The susceptibility variations due to uh, the metal uh, cause geometrical distortions and in, in general, a loss of signal uh, within the implanted area, uh, which shadows all the neighboring structures. Most metal artifact reduction techniques have introduced improvements uh, from the acquisition point of view. So tailored MR sequences, such as Maverick or SEMAC, have proven effective in reducing the extension of the shadowing, uh, but cannot completely uh, eliminate it. And this prevents the visualization of the implant in the MR images. So given the different appearance of the artifacts in the two modalities, uh, we hypothesize that their contextual complementary information could help the metal artifact reduction in both modalities. For this reason, we aim at developing a multimodal MAR technique to jointly correct uh, CT and MRI, uh, in which the CT correction would take advantage of the sharper contrast of MRI throughout the whole field of view, uh, while the MR correction uh, would be helped by implant localization information available from the CT. We choose to adopt an unsupervised deep learning approach, which does not require the pair corrupted and artifact-free images, uh, which we call multimodal artifact disentanglement network. And in particular, we introduce a multimodal similarity loss uh, to induce the network to learn uh, shared information between CT and MRI. So going into a little bit more details about the method, uh, this work builds upon the artifact disentanglement network recently proposed by Liao for uh, MAR in CT. The key idea uh, is to use a series of encoder-decoder network coupled with adversarial training in order to learn a Latin representation of the data where the artifact is disentangled from the anatomical content. 
in particular, a corrupted image here is input into two uh, encoders, the first aiming to learn the anatomy and the second, the artifact. In the artifact removal pathway, the anatomical Latin codes are decoded in a generator that learns to reconstruct clean CTs. And a discriminator here, here helps uh, generate realistic clean CTs. On a self-reconstruction pathway, the anatomical and the artifact Latin spaces are recombined back together in the corrupted generator to reconstruct the original input. Similarly, a clean image from a different subject is encoded and subsequently decoded with the artifact-free generator. At the same time, it also traverses an artifact synthesis pathway where it is joined with the encoded artifact from the other subject to produce a synthetically artifacted image added again by another discriminator. And finally, a, a cycle consistency is introduced by removing the synthetically added artifact to go back to the original clean input. This complex series of networks can be trained end-to-end -end using the following loss terms. First, we have the adversarial losses, which are the traditional losses in generative adversarial networks uh, that favor the generation of realistic, corrupted, and clean images in the artifact removal and in the artifact synthesis pathways. The reconstruction losses are simply L1 norms uh, to train coupled encoder-decoder networks uh, in an autoencoding fashion, both for the clean and the corrupted inputs. The cycle loss is enforcing the reconstruction of the clean input after artifact synthesis and subsequent artifact removal of the input uh, and acts effectively as a self artifact reduction loss. And finally, the artifact consistency loss guarantees that the artifact removed from the corrupted input is the same uh, that is added onto the clean input. So as the network learns to transfer the artifact from one input to the other. The final loss is then simply a weighted sum of all these components where the weights lambda are network hyperparameters. So the ADN sets the theoretical framework for our extension, the multimodal artifact disentanglement network. On top of the described network, uh, we introduced three key modifications to learn shared CT and MRI anatomical representation. First, the network is fed with two channel inputs, both for the corrupted and the clean pathways. The two channels are the CT and the respective registered MR from the same subject. Second, a full cycle loss is used. This is composed of two terms, the self-reduction loss already present in ADN and uh, a self-synthesis loss on the corrupted input, which gets the uh, reconstructed, uh, which reconstructs uh, the original input after artifact removal and subsequent artifact synthesis. Finally, the most important modification is the introduction of a loss term to maximize the similarity between the two output channels after artifact removal, which further enforces the sharing of information between the modalities. So this is motivated by the idea that two different images of the same object appear less similar if corrupted by noise or artifacts. And this is especially true when the artifacts present in different patterns in the two images. So by maximizing the similarity between the output channels, we aim to improve the artifact reduction for both modalities. First, the high frequency and full field of view nature of the artifact in the CT could be corrected through comparison with artifact-free regions in MRI. And second, the implant lack of signal in MRI could be compensated by uh, the CT information. We choose locally normalized cross-correlation, LNCC, as a measure of similarity, as it is suitable for multimodal comparisons and also it can be efficiently incorporated in a neural network. For the sake of illustration in this slide, you can see the process of artifact transfer at training. The corrupted input first undergoes artifact removal and the same artifact is re-added back through self-synthesis. On the clean pathway, the artifact encoded from the corrupted image is transferred to the clean image through the artifact synthesis 
and it is subsequently removed in the self-reduction. The described approach was trained on 2D uh, slices from 105 CT and MRI 3D pairs, of which 54 were corrupted by metal artifacts and 51 were not. Uh, the testing set included 11 pairs with metal artifact, uh, and these pairs were associated with the mania segmentation of four muscles uh, close to the implant, and in particular, gluteus minimus uh, was the closest muscle. In order to assess the impact of our innovations, we performed the metal artifact reduction in different settings. As a baseline, we consider the original images with no uh, correction whatsoever. Uh, we also performed the traditional MAR on CT, the refined MAR, which is based on a sinogram completion technique. And then we trained four different deep learning models. ADN CT was trained on CT only, ADN MR was trained on MRI only. The multi channel ADN is the ADN model uh, with multi channel input but no use of similarity loss. And finally, the uh, Madden model uh, with the LNCC as a similarity. Um, in this slide, you can see a visual comparison of the different experimental settings, with the first column being the original input and the last column, the Madden approach. So by looking at the CT, uh, it can be seen the Madden is the most effective in reducing the streak uh, artifacts throughout the field of view. By using the corresponding tissue information from the MRI, Madden is able to provide a stronger uh, reduction of the high frequency noise. However, uh, as example C shows, all learning methods are less effective than the traditional one in compensating for the strong photon uh, starvation in the presence of multiple implant. On the MR side, the training with MR only is completely ineffective in recognizing the artifact. On the contrary, both the multi-channel ADN and Madden are able to localize the artifacted areas and attempt a signal reconstruction within these areas. Uh, this shows that the complementary CT information is being used by the network. However, the signal in this area is still not properly regressed. To quantitatively assess the impact of uh, MAR in the CT domain, we have quantified the standard deviation of the intensities within the four muscles that were available from the manual segmentation. This was computed both for the implanted hip side and the non-implanted hip side, as the artifact is widespread throughout the field of view. For both sides, it can be seen the Madden in red uh, is the most effective in reducing the intra-tissue uh, intensity variations, uh, which confirms the qualitative observations from the visual comparison. On the MR side, uh, due to the lack of uh, proper ground truth, uh, we designed a segmentation propagation experiment in which uh, each uh, MR image was registered to all the other uh, MRs in an inter-subject registration task. By propagating the associated segmentation, then we could compute the dice score as a measure of overlap with the original segmentation. And the assumption behind this experiment is that uh, better corrected images can be better aligned in an intensity-based registration. Still in line with the qualitative observations, we found the Madden slightly improves the registration on, on the gluteus maximus and on tensor fascia latte, but it appears less effective on the gluteus minimus, which is the closest to the implant and whose manual segmentation is mostly, most strongly impacted by the artifact. It is therefore difficult to disentangle the effect of the correction from the reliability of the ground truth. So moving to the conclusion, we have presented a multimodal approach to metal art for reduction using a fully data-driven and unsupervised learning framework. And we demonstrated that the network can learn shared features from the two modalities. And this helps reduce the artifact in CT and localize the artifact region in MRI. However, our approach is currently suboptimal in reconstructing the signal in MRI. And this could be due to a limited model capacity. Uh, for all the experiments, we indeed preserved the original ADN architecture, which might not be correctly dimensioned to the multimodal task. And similarly, a better hyperparameter search uh, should be performed. 
Together with addressing the current limitations, future developments will focus on better tailoring the architecture design and also testing other similarity losses with the goal of improving the correction in MRI. Thank you for listening and please feel free to contact me with any questions.